Thank you, Dream, yet to be dreamed, for the tag. So let me give you the rundown of what's going on here, and then we'll get right into the news. Read the news. Essentially, VA Amy Smith comes out with an announcement where she is excited to be cast in these roles. Another VA, Michelle Rojas, responds and is not happy for Amy Smith. And this becomes a whole thing on Twitter.com. So the initial tweet from May 2nd. Then on May 3rd, we actually had Little Kribo making a tweet which seems vaguely related to the ones we just took a look at. Seems like it's probably spurred on by that situation. And Little Kribo gets mixed reactions here. Some people supporting it, some people not supporting it, and calling out apparent double standards over Little Kribo's own casting. So that's the TLDR. Let's read the news. Taking it back from the top, Amy Smith says double announcement, and she's excited to share that she voices both Izanami and Ayn in the latest Dislight Sea of Sorrow event, saying that she's so honored to have now voiced five espers in Dislight, and wah. Michelle Rojas then responding, saying, A warning to VAs, don't do this. It will never be worth the booking. This casting director didn't care, but many do, and it doesn't go unnoticed. We have to trust our actors, and this is a red flag. Michelle Rojas's take, getting over 480 likes. However, not everybody was keen on the take, and others may say that even if they agree with her point, that it's a red flag for her to be bashing another fellow VA in such a manner when the VA was simply celebrating. The quote tweets do seem to be mostly critical of the take, while the comments are more supportive, although some simply just question what she means. For example, this one saying, I'm confused, what's the problem here? And Michelle Rojas saying this. Non-black actor auditioning for a black character character art was provided, so they sent in an audition knowing fully that the character was black. Michelle Rojas getting 160 likes on her take. However, the responses seem to pretty much all be critical. For example, this response by Jason Douglas, and if we click some more, we can continue on and see more examples. Chris Breck saying, for example, it's voice acting. What is the problem? We'll scroll here a little bit more. You can see people talk about gatekeeping, and they also say that the take is actually racist in of itself, saying that Michelle Rojas is actually racist. We can also see more replies, and more replies seem to pretty much all disagree with Michelle Rojas's take. Ryan's take reminiscent of a situation that happened in Bleach with Chad's voice actor, where he said he was no longer going to voice Chad because he wanted to give the role to a Mexican, I believe is what he said. Chad being a Japanese Mexican character, to my recollection. And people pointed out that that VA was still voicing Asian characters, and they called out the double standards for that. However, his response was saying that it's not the same thing, and that he's totally allowed to voice Asian characters, which caused many people to essentially say that the entire take came off like a very fake and very hollow virtue signal. Which also, once again, is similar to the situation going on with Little Karibo and people accusing him of double standards. We'll get to that in a moment, however. We're not quite done with the Michelle Rojas part of this segment just yet. Because following up her take, she says, This was meant as candid advice for others and not a cheap shot to pile on to somebody. Because Amy Smith has announced that she is giving up her role after being quote tweeted by Michelle Rojas. Now, the quote tweet implies that Amy Smith did something racist, something wrong in the industry, saying it's bad and a red flag, essentially, uh, and that she's untrustworthy, etc., etc. All things which absolutely could lead to her being piled on. So many may think that this is also a rather hollow statement made by Michelle Rojas. However, Amy Smith is also getting backlash for giving up the role. Let's see what she has to say. Her tweet getting, almost there, 253 likes, an almost equal amount of quote tweets. Amy, also locking the responses. Now, let's read the statement. She wishes she had a better excuse, but she doesn't. She says she messed up, but she sincerely wishes for one thing. She hopes that it can be seen not as a malicious mistake, but seen as a she makes mistakes and can be dense sometimes kind of mistake. She says what hurts is that she really does try her best to do the right thing when it comes to authentic casting, saying it's something she believes in. So to have this oversight in her own auditions is an incredibly hard thing for her to swallow. She had a thought process behind what she was seeing in the audition casting call, but that was clearly wrong, she says, and she's really sorry. This has made her realize that she does need to be much more vigilant with the choice of whether to submit or not to submit with certain auditions moving forward. Sometimes the answer is clear as day, she says, and it's an easy yes or no for her, whereas with other audi auditions, excuse me, she'll admit on a personal level she's found it difficult to navigate. Finally saying that as voice actors, she completely recognizes there's an ownership on all of them, according to her, to make the right judgment calls and that she just needs to refine her own judgment calls much more, saying she's really sorry to those that she's let down and for not supporting her fellow VAs as much as she could be. And she promises to be better. This person then responding, saying that 
Amy Smith is her friend, and this is her earnest apology for something that genuinely matters to her and her community, saying it's a valuable discussion that they've had for a while. And if they're new to it, to please be respectful. Actually, they didn't say please, excuse me. If, they're, if you're new to it, to be respectful and catch up before embarrassing oneself. The conversation continues here. And I find this whole topic particularly interesting because I live in LA and LA is a pretty diverse area. I talk routinely with black people about these sort of topics, one more often than others because he's a close friend of mine. But pretty much regardless of which one I talk to, the general consensus is that white people on Twitter who do stuff like this, it comes off very obnoxious and a word that gets used often in these conversations is optics. They essentially tell me that white people like Rhiannon, or however you say her name, my apologies if I got that wrong, Rhiannon, uh, are just doing this for optics, basically. It's more about serving themselves than serving black people. All right, that takes us back to Little Karibo. Let's read what he has to say. Black voice actors should be playing black characters. It's not about whether the actor sounds black enough. It's about letting performers speak from a place of truth. It's about letting performers who have been notoriously sidelined actually perform at the very god -dang least. Someone in the replies pointed out it should really be phrased black characters should be played by black voice actors and I agree. I don't want there to be confusion as to what I'm saying. Scrolling through the responses, just a couple down, we can see this one from punished, jailed, then trialed, and, okay, I'm not sure what it says. But they say that they are, as someone who is black, disagreeing with the take, saying that the voice of a character should be determined by a voice that best fits them regardless of the VA's race, saying why make a silly restriction, and that the most pressing concern for voice acting should be their treatment, as currently it's quite poor. Adding, honestly, that pointless and silly discussion simply distracts and ignores the bigger issues in the industry, saying to please focus on issues that actually matter and improve the industry and career for everyone involved in it. Let me show you that I'm also not cherry-picking responses. If we go to this... You can see it's got almost 700 likes, so there is that. But again, in the responses, you can see this person simply questions the take. This person says that uh, that whole metric doesn't matter. We have the one that we just read. Another one saying he's a white savior. Another one saying he's still wrong, uh, still wrong again. And essentially, all the responses are critical for the most part. I, th this one's saying, ah, I see. I don't know, you know if they're being snarky or not. But yeah, no cherry picking here. This is the comments. Another one talking about how this is essentially segregation. Uh, more examples and more examples and finally this one and that's a routine theme throughout all of the tweets that we've taken a look at here uh, it seems like the people in support of them are mostly liking and mostly not commenting though that is somewhat of a generalization and the majority of responses are critical uh, whether they're normal responses or quote tweets now let's get back to this and talk about the people saying that he has a double standard before we get to that though we'll take a look at this tweet Cosmic Dawn saying that they essentially don't want to recast two awesome black VAs they have that are playing white characters. And asking if Little Kribo is essentially saying that Cosmic Dawn has to replace them for white people. Little Kribo then saying that literally is nobody, excuse me, literally nobody is telling you to recast. Little Kribo getting 91 likes versus the 800 on the prior tweet. This other person, Pirate Canvas, responding as well, getting 600 likes versus Kribo's 91. That tweet reading... Then show the evidence that proves that black VAs are being sidelined from playing black characters. Martin, even you have to admit to yourself this is a bad take to assume that only white people are given these opportunities. To me it's not the race of that character that should matter. It should be whether or not the person is capable of filling that role. This is why entertainment sucks nowadays because you'd rather force diversity than make an actual good product that everyone can enjoy. When I'm voicing a character I'm not thinking of that character's race because race does not define who a character should be. As mentioned, people would also allege that Little Kribo therefore then also has double standards and does not follow his own guidelines, essentially. Don saying here that he presumes Little Kribo will stop Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged series, saying that its cast doesn't reflect your skin tone or ethnic origin. Little Kribo saying that his internet series isn't taking work from anybody. And Don then saying... You don't think a young POC creator could use that as a jumping off point, much like you and Team Four Star folks did? That's not being a good ally. Little Kribo then saying, if you can find the job listing I applied for to take the role, then Little Kribo will concede that they have a good point. But until then, Little Kribo deciding to make fun of a show in some YouTube videos isn't Little Kribo taking anything from anybody, but appreciates the attempt at bad faith. 
Don then saying, the only person talking in bad faith is Little Kribo, saying it's very easy to morally grandstand when you don't stand to lose anything. How awfully convenient that your bread and butter doesn't have to live up to your own supposed stance. Little Kribo then saying that his stance is that professional black actors should be playing professional roles and that Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series isn't a factor in that statement since it's not professional work. Don Tori then responding, saying, your tweet was... Black actors should play black characters. There was no qualifier about professional work, which conveniently exempts you from any kind of personal reparations. Or is it just some minorities that deserve to speak from a place of truth, but others don't? And Little Kribo then says that he clarified the stance, saying there's nothing convenient about any of this, and he made a statement about professional actors, and this person jumped into talking about amateur parody work, to which Don then says, you made a statement about black VAs and black characters. No professional qualifier after Don pointed that out. Uh, excuse me, after Don pointed out that Little Kribo's most popular work, and partly why VAs would have to follow similar standards, then Little Kribo says it's about professional actors saying got yours already. And Little Kribo then saying that his original tweet says that because of the character limit. But if you're really that determined to ignore basic clarification, he doesn't see the point in continuing the talk. Does this continue on? It does, actually. Don then says... A typical white ally ignoring any POC who interferes with their savior complex. Little Kribo then saying that he's not ignoring Don and that he just doesn't see the point in discussing further if they're ignoring his clarification. And I don't believe Don ever responded after that one. Again, I'll mention in general, it seems like the people supportive are simply liking the tweets and moving on. And most of the people actually talking about this are critical of the takes. You can see so many examples of this by scrolling through these sort of tweets. It's basically just, just, I don't even know how to put it, just, not endless, but tons of people disagreeing with the take, essentially. I guess that's the best way I could put it. Uh, here's one that agrees with it, I think. Let's let's take a look at this. It says, this person remembers talking about this once, and the person they were talking with said, surely they should be able to practice colorblind voice casting. And this person then said that they'd agree with that person if they lived in a post-racially fully equitable society, but they don't, and to now get a grip. <laughs> to which <laughs> Gene says, shut up. And that is essentially the news. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. I will see you there. And uh, yeah, uh, if you like this, consider liking and subscribing. Appreciate it. Helps the channel out. You know, more segments like this one that you will enjoy every day. Once again, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one.